Hi, boys and girls, it's time for Kids' Corner. I'm Pastor Denny. And I'm Pastor B. And we're going to sing a song as we start now, and it's called Faith Pleases God. How many of you want to please God? Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to find out today about faith that pleases God. Are you ready? Okay, let's get going, should we? <laughs> God's love and trust with man's old righteousness Faith pleases God Faith pleases God Faith pleases God God's love and trust with man's old righteousness Faith pleases God And Dee is Pastor Dee is going to make her way over to the whiteboard to lead us in that. Well, we have learned through that song that faith pleases God. But let's take a look at a scripture that kind of talks about that, and we can learn a little bit more about what God's word says about that. It says, So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And it's found in Romans 10, 17. So the faith that we want comes from God. But how do we get that faith? We get it by hearing the word of God. Now, how can we do that? I'm going to show you one of our Bibles that we use in kids' church and in Sunday school. And it's a kids' NIV Adventure Bible. Great Bible for any age, no matter how old you are, okay? It has a lot in there. And I just want to encourage you to read the Bible. And when you read it, even read it out loud. Because when we speak the word, it becomes stronger within us. 
and it, in, it increases our faith, and it helps us to um, have that faith that God wants us to have, okay? So let's look at this again. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, Romans 10, 17. Now, there's other ways that we can be built up in our faith, and that is by listening to pastors and teachers preach and share in Sunday school, um, online, sometimes on Facebook, sometimes on YouTube. And we can listen to them and hear what God's Word is saying. That helps to build our faith. We can read our Bible. We can memorize scripture. And we can speak all of this out loud, just as we've said. Speaking things out loud and hearing it, that helps to build our faith. So our faith increases, and we have more faith to believe God for more things. Let's say it one more time. So then, faith comes by hearing, and hearing, what are we going to hear? By the word of God. Romans 10, 17. All right, don't forget that. Speak God's word out when you're reading the Bible, or especially when you share your memory verse with others, okay? And now we're going to go on. We'll see you later on. Thank you, Pastor D, for sharing this scripture with us today. It is really a powerful scripture. And not only did you share it with us, but I'm going to build upon that today, okay? Jesus did many miracles. He, he healed the sick, and he de brought deliverance to the captives. And the captives would, would be some individuals that sometimes had the influence of Satan on their life in such a manner that they couldn't uh, really be effective. And so God gave the disciples authority. He gave them the power to cast out these evil spirits out of people and to heal them of their diseases if they were sick. If they were sick. And that we found in Matthew 10, uh, 1. And the devil and these evil spirits can be responsible for sickness and pain and suffering in the world today. And but not every sickness is caused by an evil spirit. But Jesus' disciples went out to preach and to heal the sick just as he had healed the sick. And Jesus gave his disciples the same spiritual power, the same authority to use in his name to stop the devil. Now the disciples saw many wonderful things happen as they preached and as they prayed for the sick. Many were healed, many were delivered. But God wants people to do the same work that Jesus did. He wants them to do that even today. And as, as you probably are aware of, Jesus had more than uh, 12 disciples. For one time, he sent out 70 disciples. And so in that way, he wants us, too, to realize we are his disciple, too, and we can do and we can uh, operate in the same way that they did. Now, the faith of Jesus' disciples was very strong. Why? Because they had been listening carefully as he had preached to them and taught them. And as we learned in our scripture today, faith comes when we hear the word of God. But it takes faith to have our prayers answered. Now, one day, these disciples were not able to cast a demon out of the lunatic boy. They were surprised that the, the demon would not obey them. But that demon caused that boy to act crazy in a crazy manner. He would, he would, the demon would cause the boy to fall into the fire and burn himself. He would also, at times, he caused the boy to fall into water in which he might get drowned. And the boy's father brought him to Jesus, who immediately cast out the demon. Now, the, the disciples, when they had prayed for this boy before, 
They didn't have any power over the demon. They were, were at odds. They couldn't figure out why didn't, why could they not cast out this demon? And they, as they looked back to the boy and he was in his right mind, he was just as, as normal as can be, Jesus' disciple later learned the reason why they were not able to cast out the demon. Jesus' disciples had come to him and asked him, why were we not able to cast out the demon? And Jesus told them that they were unable to cast out that demon because of their unbelief. Now, unbelief is the opposite of faith. Unbelief grows strong when faith grows weak. And the disciples had quickly given up when they first tried to deal with that demon, and it didn't obey them. Now the disciples once had faith to cast out any demon, but they had let their faith, they had let it, they had let it grow weak by not keeping it recharged. Now we think of that and we think of this flashlight. Now, when it doesn't work, we have a problem. We know that the battery has run down. It's not working. So what we do is we take the battery out and we put it in a charger. Okay? We put it in a charger and we charge it up. Now the word says that faith comes into our hearts when we hear God's word. And we spend our faith when we pray. That means we use some of it. And then we spend more faith when we trust in God. And when we resist the devil, we spend more faith. So our faith can diminish. But if we charge our faith, and how do we do that? We do that by recharging our faith. We do that by speaking God's word. We do that by, by reading the word of God. We do that by listening to the word being preached. And we recharge our faith. And when we do that, our faith gets recharged, just like this flashlight. And we're able to use it and use it effectively when we pray, when we trust God, when we resist the devil. But we've got to make sure that we keep it charged. So we need to read the Word of God. We need to speak the Word of God. And we need to recharge our faith, boys and girls. And you know, it's exciting because God's Word is that powerful. And I want to tell you today, we have a special for you. We're going to go into the book of books and find uh, uh, an area where not Jesus, but his disciples acted upon what he said as they healed the blind man at, at the Gate Beautiful. Peter and John are the disciples. And just as they operated in faith and in the name of Jesus, we too today need to realize that we can operate in faith in the name of Jesus also. So let's watch the book of books. Well, 
Here we are. Thanks, Phineas. Thanks, Phineas. Is that all you can say? I was going to say thanks to you as well. Ow. Hey, be careful. Sorry about him. He's been a little upset. His wife's been going to those meetings. Oh, what meetings? Well, haven't you heard? Those crazy Galileans that are having prayer meetings all over town. They claim that Jesus of Nazareth was raised from the dead. Me? I think it's all just a little bit crazy. You know, you think so? Well, yeah, there's nothing to it. Lots of nuts have claimed to be the Messiah of Israel. If this Jesus fellow really was the Messiah, he should have stuck around just a little bit longer. Well, why do you say that? Well, they say they healed the sick. He should have stayed around long enough to finish the job. There are still lots of sick people right here in Jerusalem. What? He could have healed you, for instance. Well, do you really think he healed the sick? Maybe it was some kind of trickery. I don't know. Some people claim that he could heal all kinds of diseases. And others think he was just a magician. Me? I'm not sure what to think. Oh, I wish it were all true. And then he was still right here in Jerusalem. Well, perhaps he would come to this very gate and heal me. I wouldn't get my hopes up. Well, I gotta go to work. Aiken and I will pick you up at sundown. Thanks. Oh, wouldn't it be great if Jesus could heal me? Oh, well, it's just a thought. Hey, I better get busy. Alms, alms, money for a crippled beggar, alms. Oh, thank you, sir. Bless you. Alms, alms for a crippled beggar. In some ways, Peter, it's like Jesus never left us. You know you're right, John. I can sense him with me all the time. He said, lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. He said so many wonderful things. You know, I've been thinking. Maybe some of us should write it all down. Oh, John, Jesus did so many things that if we were to write them all down, the whole world couldn't contain the books. Yeah, you're right. It was something else, wasn't it? Every day, blind eyes open, lepers cleansed, deaf ears hear. Oh, well, you know, he told us that we would do the same things he did. I remember that. He said, the works that I do shall you do also. I'd love to see somebody healed again, wouldn't you? Oh, Jesus hated sickness. You know, I saw tears in his eyes when he saw the crowds of sick and hurting people. Peter, if we did do a miracle, well, how would we do it? Well, we would do it in his name. He told us that in his name we would lay hands on the sick. And he promised the sick would recover. That's right. Well, hey, we're going to be late for prayers. Oh, I almost forgot. Alms, alms, pocket change for a poor man, alms. Thank you, thank you, son, God bless you. Alms, alms, money for a cripple, alms, have mercy, please. Sirs, money for a poor man? Look on us. Silver and gold have I none, but I will give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Rise up and walk. I can stand. Praise God, I can stand. You can walk, too. I can walk. Praise God, I can walk. You can leap, too. I can leap. I can walk. Praise God. Did you see that? It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Who are these men? You men of Israel, why are you amazed at this? Why do you look on us as though we did this? These men must be holy men, or great prophets. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus. You turned him over to Pilate to be crucified, but God raised him up from the dead. We have seen it. How did they do that? The man has been crippled for years. We've all seen him begging there every day. This man was healed by the name of Jesus through faith in that name. It is by faith in Jesus that this man is completely well. Praise God. <laughs> Praise God, I can leap. <laughs> Praise God. Sorry we're so late. It was a long day. Yeah. <sighs> no problem, guys. You'll never have to haul me around anymore. You can stand up. Yep, I can stand. I can walk. I can run. <laughs> 
I could jump. <laughs> but how? Oh, Aiken, I'm afraid your wife is right. Jesus of Nazareth really is the Son of God. Jesus? You saw Jesus? Well, actually, no. Uh, two of his disciples came by here this morning. Their names were Peter and John. They told me that I was healed in the name of Jesus. Well, what do you know? I appreciate all you guys have done for me, but you won't have to carry me around anymore. But, Aiken, where are you going? Well, I gotta go find my wife. I need to find out where those beans are. Say, Phineas, do you think maybe I could get a job with you guys? I mean, now that I can walk, I want a real job. Well, yeah, sure. I'll come by and pick you up in the morning. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean it like that. I'll come by to show you where to go tomorrow morning. <laughs> no one will ever have to beat me up again. Oh. Boys and girls, that was a wonderful book of books. Peter and John, they were used by God to, to raise up that lame man in the name of Jesus. It's wonderful to know that he wants to do the same things today that he did. 2,000 years ago. It's, ex it's exciting to realize that we can be the conduit. We can be the individual. We can be the person that God uses, no matter how old we are, whether we're a child or whether we're an older adult, God can use us. And so I just encourage you to increase your faith, read the Word of God, and study the Word of God. And uh, uh, be, be in, well, by the way, in we're having kids' church this Sunday at 10.30 at Santa Am Chapel. And uh, I'd like to, if you're in the canyon here, uh, Lyons or Staten or the, uh, uh, you, you're welcome. We invite you to come and take part as we have a great time <clears throat> in kids' church. So God bless you and we'll see you soon.